Welcome to the January 5th, 2017 Board of Selectmen meeting here in Deerfield Town Hall. Um, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy 2017. Um, first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Um, have you had a chance to read them? I have. Them? I've read them. I make a motion to accept them is, unless anyone has any corrections. I'm fine. I'll second the motion. Okay. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The December 28th, 2016 minutes have been approved unanimously. Um, we were going to have Kevin Scarborough come, but um, he, is, he is indisposed tonight. I hope he feels better. Um, Wendy has something to read for uh, him, in just w which we will in a minute. Um, John Pachork is um, um, here. Uh, and he's not actually on the agenda, but we asked him to come in. So, John, why don't you come up? I know you have to leave, so I want to make sure you have an opportunity to, to, to um, address how you're doing on the hiring committee for town administrator. Update. No problem. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, to rehash what's transpired in the last pretty much three and a half months is... So the residents are really understanding. September 30th, uh, Doug Finn effectively resigned and moved to the Cape near his wife. We wish him the best of luck. He did an amazing job. The job was posted, the town administrator position, in mid-September. Applications were originally received. There was 10 that we took in that we actually went through and graded. Six people were interviewed in executive session. The committee did an amazing job. And I can tell you in executive session, we didn't always agree. As Trevor will note, we certainly had our arguments, but we thought we put forward four incredible candidates for the board to consider. With that said, we found out the night of the public interviews that one of the candidates had immediately withdrawn, so we were down to three. With the three people, we felt they all did a great job. I think the board felt they all did a great job, and I think you had a couple decent fits. Unfortunately, Casey withdrew her application. I think she's very satisfied. She's happy in Ashfield. She's got a three-year contract, and she's doing very well. So, you know, that makes me very pleased. Natasha took an incredible job down south. She's making very decent money in a large city, um, enjoys her position. And Ira, the one you selected to go into executive session and negotiate contract with, Obviously, as the board's aware, the residents may not be, that failed for a vast variety of reasons which we won't discuss openly. That's why it's done in executive session. However, it leaves us back to the drawing board. So the board asked me to go back and look at the position and figure out where do we go to really stabilize the town? Where do we go to backfill the position? So the first thing I said is, do we need to re-advertise it? Where do we stand? And I looked at the advertisement, and it is still, in fact, posted. It is posted open until filled, so it does not need to be reposted. And I went through and, and looked at a vast variety of options. Do we go out and recruit people? Do we see if uh, people in the area are interested? And as I put my feelers around, I actually inquired if our interim town administrator would be interested, because I think for the last two years, we've told her repeatedly, even before we got two new members on the board, that she is a natural fit for Deerfield. So I was actually shocked by her response because with the instability in the federal government right now and people knowing that Wendy's a federal mediator that you know, flies around from MEMA and resolves conflicts across FEMA. the entire FEMA. country. FEMA. Oh, I'm sorry, FEMA, not MEMA. So FEMA... She's very well respected, and I think she could do an amazing job for Deerfield. Her experience as an interim town administrator all across western Massachusetts for the past 30 some odd years has led to incredible knowledge, experience, contacts, very level headed and reasonable. That's why she makes an incredible mediator. Certainly needs to be done with department heads. Problem solving ability and the ability to bring others together, which is a core of that position. Um, she has that ability to bring people together, which I think we need as a town. 
I know it's a genuine concern of this board that you want to work with all the other boards and committees across the town. You really want a close yes. working relationship. We want the town to continue in that family environment that it's been in for the last 100 plus years. So um, the last thing that I really looked at is with Wendy's vast experience and knowledge, she has the ability to stabilize the selectman's office. She is going to be a stable voice for the next 5, 10, 15 years. And for me, she's a natural choice. So I literally was about floored when she said, you know, I, I, I'm actually considering it at this point. So my recommendation, looking all across the board at this point of the position, the posting, some of the people that are floating around out there, my recommendation would be that you request a job application and resume from Ms. Foxman and offer her the position. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks. I wish Not she to was. Not put you on the spot, but. <laughs> I, um, I don't. No, if, if we should make a formal motion, but I would make a formal motion that we ask Wendy to submit a formal application. Second. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous, Wendy. We would love you to come and submit something. No pressure. Sure. Thank you. So can you get it to me by Thank tomorrow? You. <laughs> Monday. <laughs> Donna, I, the only thing you left out is that we've had no executive ses, um, assistant for almost a year. Yes. And um, that Doug was the executive assistant with, he did a fantastic um, job trying to cover two positions, but he himself was new. And that Wendy, we have, we have only Wendy once in a while, and it hasn't, she hasn't been our interim um, administrator. She's been our special project administrator. Mm -hmm. So we have a huge backlog. Everybody has been very patient. Department heads have put in extra work um, to pick up. Uh, I Last week in the minutes, I noted, and again I will say, it is so wonderful to have two very involved working select board members. But we really, really need the office staff. Uh, things are just piling up. Wendy has been putting in the last few days um, since she came back from um, Florida. She has been putting in 10 hour days trying to catch up. I mean, there's just a lot of things that. And I think that's one of the hard part right. for the residents is they don't understand because we've never really addressed it, the amount of paperwork and action Wicked. taken by that office. Right. Yeah, yeah, there's votes taken at a select board meeting, but all that work has to go in behind the scenes. You know, including safety improvements, building renovations, financial planning, going through town meeting now, working with the finance committee. There's so much day to day to be done that, uh, you know, we got to really let the people know what's being done and what's not being done so they understand the resources being put in that office. Well, I mean, Wendy, uh, I was here at 9 o'clock this morning. Wendy came in at 10. Mm -hmm. And we worked till four. More importantly, I was here till eight thirty last night. <laughs> and she she works on the weekends. I mean, it's it's Sierra Kip I'm very is for her work. right. Kip Trevor came in. You signed payroll. Uh, Kip has been in in and out today all day. I mean, this is a huge amount of work, and we're and a huge amount of backlog that's happening. And so we need to get this addressed. And I I really sincerely hope that. We can work something out by yeah. next week. I just want to say also, um, I thought you were going to say you were shocked when I said no, <laughs> because I did say no, because I, I feel very committed to the FEMA work, which is very sporadic, and we don't mm -hmm. know where that's going. So I am very um, honored. I'm actually excited, because I really do enjoy working here, and I agree it feels like a good fit. I like the folks. I like all the department heads, and also the other employees who aren't department heads. They're also mm -hmm. going above and beyond. I want a special call out to Pat Kroll in, the, in your office, yeah. who has been very helpful to me particularly, and, and um, thank you, Pat. Um, so and then I changed my mind. <laughs> After well, the, I didn't after address the, the coaxing on camera. And, yes. I'm willing to say it, after the election and after realizing how great and important local government is, I know that because I've been doing this work for years, and it's always mattered to me. And um, 
all these people I'm looking at, I see all these people who have been serving the town in many capacities. Um, and that's what's great about it. So, at any rate, I'll be, I'll be, we'll be talking. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank good. you, John. Thank you, John, for coming in. And anything I, else or are you good? No. Yeah, we're good. Thank you, John. I sincerely appreciate you taking the time tonight, and I no hope problem. it wasn't too hard on Ian. My Ian's. pleasure. Um, <clears throat> David, I know you had said that you had to go, and normally our public comment is at the end of the meeting, but why don't you come up and um, address us quick, because I know you need to get out of here, so it's okay. Concerning the development on Sugarloaf Street, I put it all together. I received a letter from Mark Whiteman in response to my letter that I wrote to the planning board. And as we've watched, I've watched the process, every time we bring up something, it seems to be yeah. deflected. So I started, I read the letter again the other day. And if you read the last paragraph in the back, you're more than welcome to read the whole thing. But if you read through here, where he threatens to, if he doesn't get his permits, to sell the property at 400% profit and turn it over to the Thank you. Fee, which we all know will put the town in great economic distress. So every time you ask a question or a concern, such as water, I've only lived on Sugarloaf Street since the early mid-50s. Had the fortunate of being a, observing it. You bring up concerns of traffic, like when Sugarloaf Street used to be painted four lanes and kids were getting run over. There was a family that lost one. So you bring up traffic, you bring up water, you bring up deed restrictions, and you're chastised for it, for bringing up your concerns. He sends me the letter, he says, I've received a copy of your dated September 15th to interim town manager Doug Finn through Massachusetts Public record laws, and am I re responding to your concerns? Then he takes the last half of the letter and threatens that if we don't help him get his permits, he will 40 be it. Now, how can anybody, any board in town, make a conscientious decision if they've been threatened with a 40 B? Every board has been compromised. Um, I can see your concern. So we'll have... Um, when this you forward this on... Me, excuse me. Oh. This letter was sent to Patel, Penelope Tarzek from Mountain Road. She sent a letter into the town. She got an immediate response. She actually, very nice lady, she was at the point of swearing to me when she got the response. They received their letter, and then basically that back, that back page was added to their letter. The Baronis family on Sugarloaf Street they received a letter in response to their concerns. I mean, don't we have a right to have the concerns and have them heard? Um, I'll have Wendy forward this on to our legal counsel um, mm. because it, but I, I understand your distress. There's so much. I, you call the state. The state says that the town, they will do the curb cut to the town's standards. The standard is 600 feet. The developer has 285. I went to a great public school right here. It's 315 feet short of what is required for the development. But you listen to people here, oh, if they do everything, we have to put it in. They do not have enough room. They do not have enough room. Somebody's going to get killed down there. And when they do, it's not going to be on my hands because I took the time to stand up and tell you what's wrong down there. Somebody's going to get hurt. Well, you've got solar glare, you've got school buses, you've got funeral parlors, you've got sidewalks. You can't even, you um, go down at night there, you can't, even, you can't even walk on the street anymore with the high beams coming both ways. You're going to turn traffic off of both into two, two driveways within 285 feet. That 600 feet is a safety concern. That's um, a safety concern, not a, not a rule. Was there another letter? You talked about another letter. I the guess. letter I sent to the planning board. Oh, and a note on the back here. And this was copied. This letter here was copied, too. This doesn't mean that they were actually sent. It could be bluster. It could be not. This letter was sent to 
His attorney, Dan Graves, Doug Finn, John Waite, Richard Kalaszewski, and Carolyn Ness. Well, okay. is this the only letter, though? I thought you said there was another letter. No, the letter I sent, this was in response to the letter I sent with my concerns. Oh, okay. I'm spitting mad. I thought there was another letter. No. David, David we, we as a select board, we, we um, as a matter of fact, we were just talking about how, uh, you know, if uh, uh, another resident had come in earlier today when I was here, they had talked about um, a lot of times when planning board plans are approved, there's not really follow-up as to actually what is built. So there was concern that this was a 55 and older um, supposed development, then how, how can it be enforced and how can that make sure that that happens. So uh, we were talking about checking with legal counsel to see if a deed restriction um, was possible on, on you know, pr prior to improvement of the, of the plan. And then, uh, quite honestly, we as a board, um, we talked about we don't have a lot of oversight as a select board or bo Board of Health, actually. But as Board of Health, we had talked about not having any open retention ponds to have uh, right. mosquito breeding grounds. And uh, we had talked about the issues with other developments in town that, you know, it was a receiving area originally. And, um, and maybe the calculations did show that all the water is retained on site from the development, but it did not, the original calculations did not include as a receiving area as well. So, Again, the citizen today that came in that Wendy and I um, spoke to was very concerned that the calculations be including a receiving area element. So the water comes off the mountain and goes to that property plus Faster the because they're putting condu uh, swales in that are going to move the water from east to west to the storage. Well, Real quick, I'm, I'm educated in this because I irrigated as agriculture. An acre foot of water is 328,000 gallons. That's a foot of water on one acre of land. So by 20 acres, that's the rainfall. That's just the surface falling, not the surface coming on or the water underneath. That's that. The engineer stated in the public meeting that he was going to design a system to handle two 100-year storms. Well, the benchmark storm for 100 years here is a hurricane of 38. And that was 17 inches of rain. So now you're looking at 34 inches of rain he's going to design a system to. Well, the other night, no one, no one questioned it. Now they want the town to maintain the spillways. Well, if you're going to hold the water on premises, what the hell do you need a spillway for? Well, again, in, in my time as selectman, about 15 years, we've had six 100-year storms. So I agree the 100-year storm should be addressed. Plus because, the snowpack on the mountain. Yeah. And, and so I think, uh, I know Kip is real well aware of our concerns, and he does sit on the planning board, and he is going to make sure that the water is addressed. How can anybody make a conscientious decision on any board now that they've been threatened that if they do not pass this, and do not give this man whatever he wants. He's going to 40 be it. We put in two to 300 low-income units. Where do you see the threat? I was trying to understand. It's in the second. Is there a, oh, right no. here. Just well, sit there. You know, it was just an It was an explanation or a threat. Yeah. See, it, it, in a small community like this, it is difficult because, as you speak for something, people can conclude whether you're for or against something, and and I try very hard to leave my personal judgment aside and look at what we have in front of us. <clears throat> now, I read this, <clears throat> excuse me, I've read this a couple of times, and, and I honestly don't perceive this as a threat at all. I think he's just stating the fact that he does not want to see this, and this is why he's trying to do that. But if it doesn't happen, that this is something that could happen. It now, doesn't have to happen because it does, you need the curb cut. It, it doesn't, but the, this town has spent an awful lot of money to buy Oxford property because of the same type of threat. We didn't want that, so we spent a lot of money. Uh, now, <clears throat> what could happen is, you know, you talk about this curb cut. Well, the curb cut maybe is not an, an essential part of this, an essential part. He could go in with one road, but 
the people who he talks with, whether it be the fire department or the highway department and or the police department, say, you know, it's better to have two ways in and out. Why? Like, I don't know. I didn't make that decision. That's because of the safety of the residents inside the uh, housing? What be. about the safety of the kid walking down Sugarloaf Street? What I, about I the safety of the kid that already lives on that street? Never mind the new one. Yeah, what about the safety of the kid getting on the school bus with the solar glare in the morning? But that could happen any time, David, though. You, don't you th agree? I mean, the, sol the sun the comes road up is at capacity now. The road is at capacity. It was the bypass was built to eliminate the through traffic in South Deerfield. Right. Is the, okay. Didn't, didn't happen. Is it didn't happen. Now we are the bypass to the bypass. It's true. The state, the state was going to look over that cut, right? That the state, according to the permit section, Jay down there, he gave me his first name. Um, they defer to the town standards. Well, our town standards is 600 feet. It's not 285. Things should be dead on arrival if you want it. But don't sit up there in these meetings and say, well, we, they're meeting all the guidelines. The first thing this gentleman said to me in a phone call was, oh, I'm doing all the regulations. Well, you're not, because 285 is not 600. But with if, I send you two, if I owe you $600 and send you 285. Right. But with, with all rules, that I don't want to say that there's an exception, but... If, if the state deems that this is a workable situation. They're going to defer, let the town defer. They're going to let the board, planning board defer. Well, the planning board can't give that permit. Do you know what I'm saying? We can't give the permit. They will the accept cut. your guidelines. That's the way it was explained to me. They will defer to the standards of the town on a local state highway that they have. All right. Well, I guess that's that, what I was told. That's something that the planning board will have to deal with. Uh, but, but, you know, as, as far as you're concerned with this, I mean, if there is that real possibility if if this thing, if he decides not to go forward with this, for whatever reason, it's just getting to be too expensive and he walks away. Somebody else could come along and do their 40B housing and they don't have to ask How are they going to get question. to the back of the lot if they only have one road? Why does they need two? But what I'm saying to David is that if, if, if Mr. Whiteman walks away from this project, somebody else, Mr. Smith will just say, could, walk, could go and buy that land, and when you wake up in the morning, you're going to see a bulldozer going, what's going on? And they're you're just going to keep going. They don't have to ask anybody's permission. Then the whole town will enjoy it. Instead of wrecking our neighborhood, the whole town will get to enjoy the 40B project because the taxes I, will go out of sight, and the people that can afford to move will move out of town. Uh, that is the threat. To, that is why everybody knows that this project has to go in and is know. being, what I think, rubber stamped, yeah. is because they are so afraid of the 40B and not to be deemed anything, the expenses that go along with a 40B project with yeah. the town. The school's I, at capacity, sure. the police, fire, and that. So yeah. everybody's afraid of it, and they're going to rubber stamp this. Well, you know what? They're still trying to figure out how to pump the sewage out of Captain Lathrop from that project 30, 40 years ago. Right. It may be more. Yeah. They're still trying to get the water out of the cellars from the Crestview project, and we're going to do another one, and we're going to rubber stamp this one. Well, we, we really are not going to rubber stamp it, David. I mean, there's a lot that you've been here. There's a lot of engineering that's been going on. People have difference of opinions, and I understand that. But there's still a lot of stuff that's still what going on. What are they going on. to do? Excuse me. What are they going to do about the overview, the peer review? I'm not I mean, the people sure. are in a hole. I have water in my yard. I've watched water run out in the Sugarloaf Street, and they're telling me, that well, that's not a problem. Well, you know what? Go ask the previous... Uh, superintendents of streets when they had to come down there and pick the dirt up from the from the field. I, I, I it's an eye that. test. I understand that versus smell test. They they still have to you know go through all of the hoops if you will and is if they comply it's not a rubber stamp it's it's if you get go from point A to point B then you pass you take a test if however you want to word it as long as you comply with our bylaws that's. That's really the standard that we have to the go with. The water table in South Deerfield can't withstand. That system is designed to capture the water coming out of Mount Sugarloaf, the surface water, and the rainwater, and move it into holding ponds on the west side behind existing neighbors. Okay? Mm -hmm. Where is it going to go from there? Well, you know, there's it's a point. It's going to be forced into the, it's going to be forced into the. Let me just go okay. further. Okay. We just need Thank to you. finish they, up because what, what I, I, I promised Wendy that we I, would have I definitely meetings. agree with that. And if I had my way, if I was the mayor, I would do away with our whole stormwater bylaw. And all of that water that you speak of would be piped into pipes that went in Sugarloaf Street and be piped down and let it flow into the Connecticut River where it should go. 
But it, we Put have it into the sewer plant. You need flow. Thank you for your time. Okay. David, David. thank you for coming in. I, honestly, I know you're concerned. There are a lot of people that are concerned, and we, Kip will make sure that the calculations. I'll, I'll re redo it. A veiled threat. That's a veiled threat. Okay. It's still a threat. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, David. Thank you, David. Paul, are you here for something? Hey, do you need some support? Yeah. Oh. I gotta go take my heart <laughs> Thank you. I can start something, but I'll thank you. Thank you, Paul. I will say Oh no! I mean, I, one of the Read things, one of ask. the conditions. Well, one of the conditions of this of getting of getting Wendy is that I keep the meeting short. But go ahead. I mean, I honestly am sympathetic. Today, our edict, the whole yeah. yes, the whole um, economic development plan. The bill went through the third reading in the Senate, and is now sitting on the governor's desk. Oh, Paul, that's so, wonderful. But there's a caveat. He's got 10 days to sign it. So Felicity today issued a, issued a letter to the governor and asked him to sign it. It's a two-page letter stating that we are probably one of, maybe one if not, that has, as an edict, has correctly legally done what we're, we should be doing. <laughs> we technically can have commercial development mm -hmm. in an, a park that 40 years ago was created as an edict. I see. So she sent it Federal Express midday today. He's got it was enacted on the third, so the clock starts for ten days. And otherwise, then I guess it, it's called a pocket veto. It just falls off the falls off his desk. So she also wrote it, cc'd it to Stan, to uh, Steve Kulik, and the, the uh, one of the gentlemen to the DHCD. So all we can do is, hope but if he signs well, it, then, then we are probably one of the only municipalities in the state that have, have done this correctly. Mm -hmm. Do, Paul, it's very nice. Work in that in that development, that's what you're trying to do. Make it legal. Make it legal. Make it legal. Make it I legal. mean, most edicts, and I'll just finish. Most edicts in this are state, because are you going to turn away right. jobs, right, taxes, right, and right. anything else? We're trying and to. We, do and we have we have commercial development in the park. I Technically, see. that's not what it was built for. I see. So we're just trying to so now do the we're right thing. We're just we're trying that's to good. do it right. Thank you. So I'll work on that. Thank you, Paul. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Right. Take care. <laughs> um, Kip, the next item on the agenda is the planning board activities. Would you? Or do you want me to do Kevin's thing? Oh, the sludge disposal. Ooh. Just very quickly. Um, sure. You pro do you all know that uh, traditionally we bring the sludge to Montague, but it, they've had problems there, and so yeah, they've had to divert it down to Rhode Island or yes. wherever for fortune. quite a while. But the good news is they're reopening next week, oh, and are. yep, and we'll be accepting sludge. Big and um, he's Kevin's working on a budget at level service funding for for sludge disposal. It was, it was quite of an increase to take it to Rhode Island. Oh, so huge! Oh, it was huge! Hoping huge! Hoping it would be a, a reduction. Oh yeah, okay. it is. Oh no, uh, well he said working on budget as level service funding. I th I think what he uh, might he, mean returning he, to the previous funding. I'm not. Yeah, certain. what he's what he he's he's I think what he meant was that what he's we've working been on the budget, and it's going to be a level service budget. And it will have a positive. Oh right, impact. that was a separate item. You're right. Yeah. Oh. But but yeah, the sludge the cost department. will go way back, okay. back down to where they were yeah. before. Yeah. But, uh, hopefully, this will make a huge difference because this was one of the. No, it was a, bit, a lot of oh, money. A huge amount of money. Yeah. Was, oh. Yeah. Well, you're trucking it instead of Montague next right. door. Right. You're trucking it down to Rhode Island. Yeah. So it was huge expense. The price that they charge in Rhode Island was quite a bit. Was a lot, too. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. And it so was highway robbery. Separately, or, he said he's working on a level service budget for uh, And he's the, hoping uh, to have a department for relatively soon. Okay. Because right now, a lot of that to Boston, right? well, if we have it, yeah. So, okay. Kip, you were, yes. did you just want to follow up on anything? I had actually had? suggested to, you know, give some report from planning board activities because there's a lot going on, but it's yeah, we uh, we haven't heard anything from the um, folks at Cumberland Farms quite yet. Uh, they're still doing some engineering, I believe, and they're also waiting for some uh, peer review from the FERCOG. Um, we did discuss you know the condo project on Sugarloaf Street for several hours and. I think that it's going well. I know that there's some objections to it and concerns, and you know, I think that the board is 
really taking their time and listening to everybody involved. And, you know, by no means have we come to any conclusions at this point. All that we have done is acknowledge the fact that, you know, they're following the bylaws and that we're receptive to their information. And uh, what we, we will probably not be making any decisions until we've had a chance to read the peer reviews and listen to the uh, whoever that engineer might be and right. you know then then that's when the dialogue will really you know start between you know, you know what they're doing and stuff like that yeah uh, most of the phone calls um, I have had is just making sure that the calculations are really accurate yeah. and that they're double checked because that's what happened on Crestview you know supposedly the engineers numbers were correct and there's not really I, I mean Everybody has water in their cellars now. And so we're, what we were trying to do is avoid, yeah, or, I, as, or people perceive that this is, the water is going to be an issue and they want to make sure that the calculations, Wendy and I had someone come in today and talk about it, was to make sure that the calculations are really checked to make sure that they actually work and that they're, the compensation for it being a receiving area right now is worked into the calculations and well I, I for my own uh, peace of mind I've spoken with uh, okay. at least a dozen residents in that area and most of them homes but one business and I've come right now have you ever had water in your basement and it's the response has been almost never that's not to say that it doesn't exist and it's not problems but a lot of times these folks have older homes that are susceptible to groundwater issues anyways. Um, still doesn't make it right if it's happening, but to, to try to figure out exactly how this water is going to move and how this, you know, it, it's, there's, there's a trick to it. A lot of this construction, from what I've seen, is gonna be above this water table anyways. Um, as David pointed out, you know, if you've got all this water and you're putting it, trying to retain it on site, you know, that in itself is an issue. And, and, and I've taken personal, you know, um, cause against our stormwater bylaw. Not to say that we don't need stormwater management, but we have that in our subdivision bylaws, but the stormwater bylaw is ad, is addition to that, and there's conflicting report, uh, conflicting, what do I say, circumstances or something, or rules. So, you know, a developer or anybody really can kind of pick and choose and make claim that they're following the bylaws where somebody else can argue, well, you don't meet this, and you know, our bylaw doesn't address when there's a conflict, and, and I think it needs a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But other than that, uh, you know, we didn't, uh, the planning board decided that they wanted to have peer review on the uh, proposed uh, marijuana dispensary as well, um, you know, and so we'll have to wait till next month to see where that goes. I did try to push that the board look at it ourselves, um, but they decided that they wanted to wait. Okay. I don't think it's that comp You were on the planning board for many years. I mean, this is a, a very small parcel of land. Um, they were just, we have, you know, seven key areas to speak to, and I think that the board is knowledgeable enough to address all of them, but we're going to, we put it off again, and we'll wait for I wasn't really sure why that one actually had site plan review because of it was, it was really a renovation. It's, it's a change of use, yeah. and yeah. I, a lot of what I read out of it, when you go to, for change of use, it's usually a building inspection thing, and it has to do with you know, what <clears throat> the use was and you know, what it's going to be. Does it meet all of the requirements for ADA or um, you know, mm -hmm. different you know, building code safety right. issues? Um, but this is going from a non-conforming use, a residential, in an industrial to a conforming use, the marijuana uh, dispensary, because that's what it was designed for. So I, I also failed to see, you know, why it even needed to go this way. But, you know, the, the, our chair decided that because it was a change of use, it needed site plan review, and here we go. Okay. I just want to mention something I found out about it. I didn't get this directly, but I guess a call came in from a member of the Waitley Planning Board about that road being an easement, yes. not a road. Yeah, there was, and Waitley, a, um, there was and a gentleman, I forgot his name, he was an attorney from Northampton, um, and he did, uh, he did bring up the fact of, of the driveway being an easement, but I, I, it's, 
I don't believe that's an issue. It, it's been uh, an easement for an awful long time, you know, 40 or 50 years. Um, it, it was their access to that house because the road cut it off. Um, and I also have to say that, uh, maybe I shouldn't say, <laughs> is that, uh, <laughs> it, you know, the, 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 that particular argument was more, came from a person who represented the previous landlord of the property. So yeah, I, I don't know where it, I thought, this, I thought this was an issue of whether that easement was actually in Waitley and whether that planning board needed to get involved. Either that was what I no, the was east, represented the, to me. The east, the access off the highway yeah. is in Waitley, right? But the easement is in Deerfield. Okay. So, I guess they were wondering whether, because the access off the highway is whether or not Waitley needs to get involved. Okay. <laughs> It's above my jurisdiction. Okay. Yes. Well, <laughs> we may or may not hear something. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is um, we need to vote to appoint Charlie Konecki as an alternate special health agent uh, to support Dick in his activities. I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to appoint Charlie Konecki to, as a special slash um, alternate health agent for the town of Deerfield. I'll second the motion. Um, is there any further discussion? No. no. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Here's a form about that. We need to sign this now? Uh, yeah. Um, yes. I don't know why it needs three, but. Um, probably because uh, you're doing legal enforcement. I mean, you know, when you're, when you're a health agent, you enforce well, health rules. I think this is for all the appointments, because I've got the same form for your next two appointments. So. Oh. Well, okay. anyway, it's, a fish, it's official anyway. Okay, we are very lucky to have two um, zoning board um, volunteers. I want, I want to thank Frank Morrow uh, for volunteering to be a full member and Dick Moody to being an alternate member so that our zoning board will have the ability to have a quorum. So. That's great. Um, I will Thank entertain you. a motion. I really appreciate the help. I make a motion to appoint Frank Morrow uh, to the ZBA as a full member. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? No. no. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. I'm going to make a motion to appoint Richard Moody Jr. as a ZBA alternate member. I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very um, much for Oh, thank you. Very thrilled to have people do that. That's wonderful. Because um, we did have quorum issues, especially with um, two of our long-term members have, have been sick and we had a resignation. So it has been very, very hard. Um, next item on the agenda is comments um, for Salt City um, on the Pan Am site. It's a uh, height variance. They want to um, to get equipment into a salt shed, they need um, it to be about 50 feet high instead of our limit of 35 feet. I don't see any issues, but I didn't, you know, I wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to. Is there, um, do you know any more details than that? Or? Yeah. No. Nope. Where it was on the property. Wendy, um, did you, did you, you didn't get any more details um, other than it was a height variance, right? I, all I have is what was given to me and I gave that to you. Okay. So 30,000, 50 foot. I have a second page, but it just mirrors what it says in type of proposal in the document I gave to you. But yeah. You're welcome to look at that. That was what's the, the ad in the newspaper. Oh, okay. Um, Um, it's not in any hazardous location, right, as far as... Well, the salt um, shed still has to be built to, um, you know, DEP. Closed. Yeah. Um, I mean, it has to have, uh, you know, walls and, you know, runoff, potential runoff has to be contained and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, but it's just for height-wise, it's not interfering with anything of the safety nature, right? No, not that I'm aware of. I'm to see the property. Um, so this must be just the address for this whole area. Yeah, it's right, right, it's right behind. Okay, so if you, this is uh, 
This is the main. This is a bird feed company. And okay. So and this is or the, the main old yard. Feed. Yeah, and that's the main yard. So Kip, can you see where Trevor has pulled it up? It's right behind the main yard. Yeah, I I'm. Just I'm familiar with the area. I was road. just wondering, about the, are they renovating a building or building a new one? We don't know. I think it's a new one. Okay. Yeah, because I don't see, I mean, the plot of 100 could be this whole area. I yeah. don't really know on the maps uh, where it would be, where it would be placed in conjunction to anything else here. The only light that I can shed on the subject is that the planning board has discussed this 50 foot height increase in that limitation. And there was unanimous, uh, opinion it would be a good thing. We, I don't think we actually took any uh, final decision on it, only because we know that we have to bring it to town meeting and that wasn't going to happen for some time. I, I can tell you where the 35 foot limitation came from because it was from my day yep. in the, on the planning board and this was pre South Deerfield having a ladder truck. So oh, the I idea percent. was not to have any residential dwellings or school uh, buildings sense. or anything right. that if we there was a fire reach. that we could not reach mm -hmm. um, for safety. Now, obviously, we have a ladder truck and, right. and this is I mean, residence. we've moved, right, this right. is not a residence and yeah. we've kind of moved on from that limitation. It's kind of outlived the reasoning behind the limitation. I think the um, new uh, DA building is a little bit above that too. And they talked about it how yeah. they, they reach and events. they can reach right, it with yeah. the ladder. So, and that, and that was, I mean, but at the time in the, there was yeah. no ladder trucks. I don't even think Greenfield had a ladder truck at that point. Well, maybe they yeah. did, but there was very few ladder trucks anywhere. Right. Yeah. And, and so even with mutual aid, the possibility of getting a ladder truck here was really was very reduced. Mm -hmm. so now it's much more common to have a ladder truck. And some of the discussion uh, around this was, you know, was 50 feet going to be adequate because of multi-story uh, dwellings versus, you know, a standalone uh, building. And I, and I went through this myself where I have a single-story building, but because I made it to look like a meeting house with a steeple, the, the steeple, the top of the steeple was actually at 38 feet, so I had to get a variance. But, you know, there's the, the top 20 feet was nothing more than decoration. It wasn't, yeah. uh, you know, there was no human uh, capacity to get in there. Just, right. It was just all... Or any decoration. Okay. So, well, and and that's what it was really. I don't from um, the, so on these we were not going to make a like no comment right. Yeah, we, we should say something comment yeah, in favor that, of, yeah. of them. So yeah. so what we want to say is, um, the the select board. Do we want to vote a sure. or just say that? Yeah. Um, we, yeah. yeah. Do we need to vote? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Why not? Okay. Yeah. Um, then I make the motion that um, we vote that there are, um, are no, we have no issues or concerns about the variance being granted. Does that make, is that yeah. proper language, from Wendy? Okay. And if, there's, that. if there's okay. no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then you can sign that and I'll insert those comments. Okay. I, I, I think. You want to sign it? Yeah. You sign chair, right? Yep. Uh, um, I think, Kip, you are absolutely right that it's better not to, I mean, we should make comment every mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. yeah. even if there are no, no because issues. Because I've watched other boards on TV, and when they get that and they say no comment, well, does that mean that they support it or they don't support it or, you know, so right. and why leave the question in their mind, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, I. I, I think social media did that, no comment. <laughs> All right. Um, and I will Kip, that in and you are on the agenda for the sewer pricing statute. Should I get, I know Bruce Hunter wanted to. Oh, you could ask him if he would. Okay. Yeah. I did. Do you I, want to go? He to made me else? aware of it and I looked it up and I thought it was something that, um, okay. you know, I thought we, th that the board probably already had this authority, but it was something that if we didn't, we should uh, definitely vote in. I think it was something as simple as, uh, you know, we take the vote on it. And it gives us the authority to do uh, the sewer pricing. It's, and could, could you just give me a quick rundown on what this is? This so is, you uh, don't think we have this already? I'm not sure. Is, oh, oh, okay. And this, we're not sure if this is a part of our... Uh, this is new, but oh, this or is new. It's, okay. it's not brand new. But this but came I don't from know somebody if, else's. I don't know if the, the town had ever adopted anything like I this. I see. So. He said no. He said no. 
Yeah, okay. Right. He did He's, it initially, and I, yeah. he and I spoke briefly about it, because okay. he, he said he was going to, if um, you had been able to speak before they went into their meeting. Um, I did a little research. It's, it's unknown. I mean, it's, it's not, um, I have to do more research. <laughs> Um, People are we, not adopting it, and, and you know we did. But it looks like it's it's an opportunity to uh, create an enterprise fund or an enterprise fund. Um, can we can situation. we could we get a little clarity from Lisa on what the impact would be? Because we we uh, as sewer commissioners, we already I'm pretty sure we already have this ability to do this. But what this is doing is. Um, I mean, we can set up an enterprise fund. I is think. that what this is asking for here? It's to be it's able to more, set up an it's more than that, make, though. Because and we have been separating the expenses. I mean, we, when we budget, we accept. I'm I'm just the only the reason why I'm concerned um, about adopting it tonight. I, I mean, oh, I kind of would like to table a little. Oh, sure, that's well, fine. I, yeah, I just, just, I just wanted to bring it forward. Because I don't want to so, contradict what we have on the right. books. I think that's wise. You know, to, uh, we can check into it more, and both can have a chance to read it. And if you yeah. come up with any questions, I just thought it was something that you know yeah. if we don't have, we should have. And, and, and can you just recap what this is asking again, or what it, this is giving us power to set? Well, up it's just on? given us power to set rates for the, uh, or not just rates, but any of the costs involved with uh, the construction or Maintain. reconstruction, maintenance, and stuff like that. I mean, because we are going forward with, you know, some sort of uh, Repair. sewer repairs. Right. Uh, and it, I, 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 I hope that it goes slowly because Correct. the impact is going to be too severe. Right. And going forward, um, you know, it would just be nice if we can, you know, kind of dictate the cost. And, you mm -hmm. know, I don't want this to get involved too much with the engineers like it, it mm -hmm. has with the school roof. Same, same principles, just different topics, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, the only reason I would like her to, or, or just to table it till we get this sorted yeah. out, because they keep talking about water and sewer together, and, it, and of course of the rest of the statute, the rest of the sections in Chapter 40 above it all talk talk about water. So it's kind of interesting that this this was this in there that right. addressed both water and sewer. So yeah. I started but, to research it and I haven't finished yet, and I'd be you know. Yeah. So and, so maybe what we can do is Wendy, you could just keep sort of researching mm -hmm. it, and then mm -hmm. at some point. We can figure Brilliant. out with Lisa how this, I mean, what's the good way what's forward? What's the advantage? Yeah. 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 I, what I heard you say earlier was, do we, can we already do what this is going to allow I'm us sure. to do? Right. And, you I know, can. I, I, we can. We so, probably can. But in, in, even though it, it might seem a bit confusing where it talks about water and sewer, it, it doesn't necessarily mean, it's just, that's what it includes, you know, water, okay. water pipes, sewer, sewer pipes, even though they're two separate things. Yep. Okay. So, but but it might have been put in because there was some limitation in water systems Could be. that yeah. weren't in sewer. But just to be clear, they that might have been the minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm we no longer uh, keep up with the um, mass practice books, which tell us um, when a uh, statute changes, you get that history. And I tried to look at that to find, but I, we don't keep up with that. So I, I had no background information on why this. Um, section was added to the laws or okay. whether it was amended. So that, that would have been helpful, but I, I'll I, just have to ask. I <laughs> did get this from uh, Bruce Hunter, and I did not have an opportunity to speak with him about it. Um, you know, it came along with several other things, and I was just kind of busy, and I, I read it along with the other issues with the sewer projects. Mm -hmm. um, I well, I, I mean, anything that's going to improve clarity clarity and our ability to move forward mm -hmm. but maybe we have to do something like this if we apportion start apportioning costs I don't, know. I, I, I don't know I mean the decision to do that has not been made no. but it maybe we have to do this if we're going to apportion costs to non-users you know some of well, these capital costs yeah I don't know how that will go but yeah, I think yeah. I know, no, but I meant maybe right. that, that's what this is from because you're talking about yeah. land acquisition for your facilities and, your t and, and water, right. water supplies. And um, so I, I guess we just l let's table this and look into this a little bit more but if it, that's it, okay with you. That's fine with me. Um, rather than um, move on it tonight I, I, because it I'm does not really seem to sure. Focus on Conservation too. I would just yeah. want to point that out. And um, and we're actually yeah. right not doing conservation, <laughs> which 
does bother me a little bit, but I, I mean, I totally get it, but I, I, I do think that some water conservation, some I, kind of conservation program. I'll get to that. I mean, the pen <laughs> penalized minimum users seems so wrong to me nowadays, but. In, in my brief conversation with Bruce before the meeting, he said he had the same situation I did, which we can't really figure out what this is doing <laughs> and how this is different from what pre existed, but he came across this as well. Okay. And you're saying now that he, he's the one who provided it to you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, so more research into it, and, and yeah. if it's something you need or you already have the powers to do this, or right. whether this would be useful, and I think he's also looking at that. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've addressed public comment. Is there any old business that anyone has? I do not. I'm still working on getting that meeting set up. Um, I sent out emails to Scott Paul and John about the grant for the fiber, and, and for some okay. reason, Scott's bounced back to me, and I just haven't had a chance to call him and say um, email address. I think we have a phone call scheduled for Monday, um, a conference call that Wendy will be participating in um, for the Mosquito District, and we did talk a little I bit about. There, wasn't there a meeting set up for the third? Uh, that's the, the separate thing. Yeah, the okay. phone call is for the grant. Okay. Uh, members, and um, is that the uh, doodle? Email yeah, that came through. Yeah. Okay. All right. And that was so that we could start moving ahead with that. And we actually, when Charlie Konecki was here today, um, we he's thinking about it, and okay. he would be a wonderful. Yeah. person to be our consultant and the reason why is because he he was involved with mosquitoes earlier but he understands the politics of the Department of Public Health mm -hmm. and their lab and are wanting to work with the UMass lab right. and having students do our trapping and the sustainability of of the district means that it should be affordable mm -hmm. to us as members and using the UMass lab and students to do the trapping and testing is one of the ways that we intend to be keep our costs very low and local because number yeah. one you just drop them off you have the kids you're hiring kids mm -hmm. at I, I, I shouldn't say kids students, students. interns mm -hmm. that gives them field experience at a much reduced non um, benefited program right. person so you you're going to save money by having you know a, a constant turnover of interns working for you doing the trapping versus a full-time benefited employee right. so because it's a very short period of time and guess what yeah. the kids are on you know on school break so yeah. they're willing to do this and and right. it, so so it becomes affordable for us as community so sure. anyway Hey. Part of the advantage of this is the politics that Charlie understands. Okay. I had a couple of things. Uh, I did sure. go look at the shed uh, roof at the dump as well as mm -hmm. Trevor did. Oh, good. And I, I don't think that's going to be anywhere near as expensive as Kevin had. Uh, well, he was thought. worried. In, yeah. In, yeah. But uh, I'm still going to wait until see if he gets a hold of He's anybody get to do quotes. it. And, um, but, yeah, I can. Uh, but I'll, He's I'll, supposed I'll, to come back to our. Um, C CIPC meeting on the 25th of okay. um, January to um, give with three quotes. What I what I it is, it is something that should get done you know relatively soon you know like you know if as soon as the weather gets nice into early summer uh, it is rotten to the point where I don't think it's going to collapse but it's sure not far from it. Yes. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to talk with you oh. uh, to oh, about that's nasty looking. Yeah. I mean that looks. Like it really does need to be done. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I wanted to know if it was all right with you if I start to deal with the windows on the north side of the office building. I'd like to either put a, a heavy tint or a, a black shiny paper on the inside of them, put foam and then drywall over, you know, a certain number of windows, like maybe every other one or every third one or something like that. It's it would look nice, but it's a pretty temporary thing. You could take them off. It, it would just be sheet. Um, the drywall would be fastened with screws that could be unscrewed and just take the foam off and peel the paper off if you want. Or you could leave the paper there. It just would be tinted. Um, I actually have no problem with that. However, I would like Wendy's input because it is going her to be her too. office, Kip. Well, so I was there today. She was cold most of the day. 
Oh, but you like a lot of light. I like the light. I like the view. Well, I wasn't going to do every window, but. We'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. I, I, I feel comfortable that you will come to a resolution. Okay. Oh, I do, uh, too. Dick's, <laughs> if Dick wants it over there, I mean, he's been bugging me about it, but. You I, I think Priscilla um, has not the same. Um, uh, no, she I mean, she faces, faces yeah. the right. wall. Right. So, well, like I said, it's there's. I mean, her desk mm -hmm. faces. It's well. not going to be every window, you know, but it's just just to help insulate you know, a little bit. Yeah, and that was actually part of a plan with the Green Communities Grant three, four, five years ago, and Never you happened. know what happened. We, yeah. So it didn't happen. I, I think <laughs> we could save quite a bit on that end. Yeah, and then. I, and you need to negotiate with Wendy because remember, the whole plan is to get Wendy here. <laughs> so I don't want her not to come because we want to. Oh, we'll just we'll, we'll just paste have my, my those, name in the uh, window. W tinted, E tinted. <laughs> we'll put we'll put one of those Caribbean you know stickers hey. on the inside oh, yeah. so you'll feel pa like a you're palm tree. Palm tree. I got three tinted. minutes to finish the I, meeting I, up. Right. This was, I told you uh, unless was, I make it longer. This was <laughs> my promise to get Wendy here as well is that we would have. <laughs> an hour meeting so you want a motion with no return? no uh, with no later no I got no, three minutes no you've got other things <laughs> that, something no else. later oh, than eight o'clock okay so um I just so we're not going into <laughs> executive session because we don't have an application mm -hmm. um so we're hopefully do that next week so we're meeting Monday the 9th with the personnel committee at five o'clock okay five um Monday yeah, yeah I think yeah, I put their meeting yeah five o'clock yeah. Um, we're going over the compensation schedule yeah. and protocols. So, right. and to and to explain why, or I am explaining and apologizing in person. It'll be it'll be good to get all get on the same page. Yes. Yeah, I think that's. Then we're we're going to meet Wednesday the 11th at 6:30, um, and we're going to meet Wednesday the 25th at 6:30. Um, the 25th of January. Oh, okay. And um, February, um, Trevor, do you have a school committee meeting the first Wednesday of February? I do. Okay. Wendy actually, uh, um, I, I'm assuming that we can make this decision next month, I mean next week after we've met with Wendy in executive session. But potentially we were thinking of, um, to accommodate Wendy's schedule a little bit, we were thinking of moving the selectmen's meetings to Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, does either one of you have a problem with that? Oh. Uh, I don't. I don't at all. So you, you're thinking it would be the twenty? Uh, that that we would we would start meeting on Tuesday. So you're not in conflict oh, ever with the school fine. committee, and then Wendy could go to her great. sympathy. Oh, sure, sim sure. For whatever reason, I cannot. Sympathy Orchestra. Yes. <laughs> her or orchestra that. rehearsals. Her Rainer orchestra. Valley Symphony. Let I me heard, put in a plug. I <laughs> won't be around the week of that 7th, but you obviously could meet without me. Um, I'm going to be in Florida that week for a conference. Oh, well, you know what we could do? Wendy, the other thing that Wendy was interested in is seeing um, if um, we wanted to meet every other week right, once we got on. A bit once yeah. We got on. Uh, once we get caught up, I mean, and I told her one of the reasons we we're meeting every week is not because we had a huge load agenda. It was just so we had an opportunity to touch base. Yeah, I really enjoyed the meetings, but I, I'm happy to meet whatever um, keeps Wendy, everyone sane. <laughs> well, Wendy's, Wendy's yeah, no, well, just efficiency. to, tr to try. I mean, yeah. you've met every other week for years. Yes. Um, and see how that goes, and but also keep the day open in case yeah. you need to have yeah. a meeting scheduled. Sure. Yeah. You decide I mean, we need to meet next week, and then we'll do it. Yeah, depending on so what's going on. Potentially, February might end up being Tuesdays. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's Valentine's Day. But. Oh. I know. Well, so. maybe we can figure out something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.